thanks for being here. Um, our young men are, are preparing to to battle uh, South Alabama th this weekend. They uh, are a very experienced football team. I think they have 19 uh, senior starters. I know that their whole D-line are seniors. Uh, three of the four linebackers are seniors, and three of the four secondary players are seniors. Uh, offensively, they're they're senior-laden team also. So they have a lot, a lot of experience and older guys that know how to play the game. They're very, very physical on defense and fast. And offensively, they're a very sound football team uh, with a quarterback that is very athletic, that can run and throw. So, you know, we've got to have a much better week of practice uh, mentally. Uh, our kids have practiced well physically uh, every week, but uh, this week mentally uh, we need to get out of the doldrums of uh, loss against uh, – Arkansas State and getting into reality that uh, we, we've got to wake up or South Alabama will, will crush us. So I'll open up for any questions. Um, yesterday you talked about trying to figure out, uh, considering different combinations on the right side of the offensive line. Have you all settled on any as of after today's practice? Uh, right today we worked uh, Taylor Evans at right tackle, and uh, Akil Hawkins at right guard, and Garrett Garinge at right guard, and Jemai Davidson at right guard, and then we did where we had Taylor Evans back at guard and Steve Wolgamon at right tackle. So uh, we'll just keep working it, and all of them are going to play. We just got to get them all, you know, reps during this uh, week of practice. Wolgamot is not in the uh, consideration for a combination at guard then? No, we're going to keep him outside. Coach, what do you think your running game looks like? Uh, you've had some uh, players change uh, around at that position, and Marcus Caffey was a little bit banged up. Well, I mean, right now, um, Gerald Howes and Marcus Caffey, hopefully Marcus gets back. He practiced today. So Gerald Howes and Marcus Caffey and Dontavious Crocker I'll be able to go. Those are the only three remaining healthy players that we have at that position. So, you know, we have a a uh, contingency plan that we would, if something happened, we would have to move Glenn Smith to to tailback. But those are the three that we have, and they'll all three play. What do you see on film from the uh, South Alabama pass defense? They seem to be pretty uh, highly ranked in the Sun Belt Conference. They are long. They're very athletic. They play extremely hard. They're well coached. And part of the, the reason that they're so good on the, in pass defense is because those guys up front, they can get to the, the quarterback. They've got some guys up front that are what I, we call war daddies. They can get to the – they don't have to blitz to create pressure. They can rush four and get there. And they were able to rush four and get to the quarterback a couple times against Mississippi State. And they can do it against anybody. I mean, they're big, they're physical, and they're fast. Sound like Arkansas State. Yeah, I mean, they're very similar. I'm, we, we're, we've hit the gauntlet of the conference right now. I mean, uh, Louisiana Lafayette. Arkansas State, South Alabama, Georgia Southern, those four games in a row, that's the upper four of the conference. And those guys, they're all good on defense, and they're all pretty similar, and they're all, you know, very athletic and, and play extremely hard, and they're all well coached. So, I mean, this is that stretch run for us where we're seeing the best of the best in the conference. Not to take anything away from anybody else, because I know Texas State's having a, a great year, but we don't, I mean, you know, we, we don't see them. We get the privilege of going to Clemson before we do tex play Texas State. So, you know, the, these, these, four, these four games in a row for us are a heck of a stretch. Coach, what are your thoughts on uh, Joel Ruiz? He was uh, named to the midseason uh, Mackey Award list. He's second in the nation uh, in yards per game for tight ends, and certainly uh, you want him to be a big part of Saturday's contest against the Jaguars. Yeah, I'm, I'm very excited for Joel. He's, he's a wonderful person. Uh, he's a great teammate. Uh, he, he's a leader. He's tough, and, uh, you know, he's a weapon for us. So anytime you can utilize him and – 
and he can perform well. It, it, it helps our offense, but, you know, I'm happy for him and his family. They're great people, and, you know, hopefully he continues at the pace that he is. And the best thing about him is he's back next year. <laughs> Are y'all going to continue with um, Hobson as kind of a fourth walk-up down lineman? Uh, yeah, but you notice he didn't even or? suit up for the last game. He was out, too. Oh, okay. I, we, we, he tried to go with, when he woke up on Saturday morning pregame, but he couldn't do it. You know, he's had ankle and knee and shoulder issues. So if we can get him healthy and get him out there, yes, he'll, he'll continue to play. But, you know, we're, we're trying to figure all that out right now. Tanner Strickland played in the game and helped us. And, uh, you know, we've, all year long we've been using David Huey and Tevin Jones and Will Cunningham and – uh, Shawane Lawrence and Jalen Lawrence. So that's where we're at. We're 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 a little decimated right now, injury wise. But our kids are they're fighting through. James Trailer. So to, so to go ahead and give you an update on uh, injuries, James Trailer will be out for this game, uh, concussion symptoms. Jarrell Robinson is questionable to doubtful. He injured his shoulder today. Duval Smith is out. With his shoulder. Um, if, if Trailer and Robinson are both out, who? Melvin King and, and me? Who, who are the Well, I think we, we, we tried to sneak uh, PJ Volker into some pads today, <laughs> but nobody's dumb enough to do what I did last week, so that, didn't, that wouldn't work. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll, somebody, we're we're going to go and play. Somebody's going to line up. With that being said, Coach, are turnovers the best elixir right now for the defense? Are they the what? Turnovers, forcing turnovers. Is that the best best elixir for your defense right now with the injuries? Oh, I mean, anytime we can force turnovers, it, it's great for the team. You know, and, and we haven't done enough of that this year. We, I mean, I, I don't – I think we've got one interception. We have two. We have two interceptions all season long. I mean, that's not enough. It's not enough. Not enough fumble cause fumbles. So, you know, we emphasize it every day. We work on it, but you know, we've got to get ourselves uh, to the point where we're in position to to create those turnovers. Coach, I was going to ask you to elaborate more about the things you're having to do the juggle to you know because of the decimation of the of the roster and what you and the coaching staff are, uh, are confronted with and how you guys are just dealing with it well you know we, we you, you have to you you play with the cards you're dealt and we're moving guys around um, Spencer Haywood will walk on uh, outside linebacker force is you know moved up and getting in getting reps so you know we, we, we're going to fill the team we're going to plug in guys and they're going to play hard and they're going to go out there and, and perform uh, to the best of their ability. So we make no excuses. It doesn't matter who's out there. We, they're expected to play well. I mean, th this issue, this injury issue, seemingly happening to certain positions, has happened every single year here for at least the past three. Uh, it was the offensive line last year and the year before, and now it looks like the linebackers. Can you – have you ever seen anything like this, experienced anything like this in, in your coaching? Well, you, you see it more – Really, where you see it more, to be honest with you, is the FCS level because of only having 63 scholarships. Right now, scholarship-wise, we're an FCS level team. We only we're 69. We counted up yesterday. We have healthy, including guys that were redshirting, healthy 65 bodies. That's including red guys that were Gabe Mobley that were redshirting this year. Uh, uh, Jerome Smith that we're redshirting this year, Ronald Peterkin that we're redshirting this year. Okay, so we only have 65 uh, bodies to to participate in in games, or not even 65. Yeah, and, and that's not saying he's not going to play. He just he's he's questionable. Coach, your, your team's been dominant on third downs this season. Uh, last game, that, that wasn't the case. Was Not that, so much. Was that because mostly because of the run game, playing behind the sticks and you know having to throw after being down early? Are you, are you, and also, are you expecting that to be rectified and get back to what you guys were doing earlier in the well, season? Well, first and foremost, let me give credit to Arkansas State for 
I mean, we were behind the chains, behind the down because of what they were doing too. I mean, they were a really good, fast defense. So, you know, we, we didn't uh, – we weren't able to match them uh, uh, with our execution or, or, you know, play. So, you know, yes, not being able to run the ball much has a lot to do with it. If you notice in games, we've, you know, been able to run the ball and move that helps us move the ball. We've said that since the day we walked in the door that you got to have balance and you have to be able to run the football, establish the run. And you know, no offense to anybody, but we're you know we've taken Marcus Caffey and moved him, so he's been a running back for two weeks. And you know, Dontavious Crocker's a walk on, and Gerald House is coming back as a senior, not playing much last year at all, and with a broken hand, and just now getting back in you know in playing. So. You know, we, we've got to find a way to run the ball, but we've got to find a way to stay ahead of the, the chains and, and, and move it so that we're not in the third and longs. Nobody's successful on, on even Peyton Manning struggles when he's constantly in third and long situations. It's just not a good situation to be in.